Today is going to be a real challenge because it is going to be raining on and off throughout the day but I thought I might as well attempt to try and install another skylight considering it is not torrential rain and therefore I can just use kitchen roll to make sure that the flashing tape perfectly adheres to it. Now I've actually changed my mind on the order I want to install these skylights because in the previous video I installed this temporary door but the one thing that still concerns me is the fact that I've got to carry the rest of that marine grade plywood into the tiny house and therefore carrying a full board of plywood right next to a skylight concerns me a little bit. So I'm going to install the skylight that goes next to the living room on the end wall. Now this one, I've got a little bit of OSB to cut and install, add the remaining Tyvek, and then in theory it should go pretty simply because now I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to installing flashing tape. The only issue is when I was designing this window I really wanted it so it can look straight out into this tree hedge thing. Now the problem with this idea is the fact that I've got to now work around this tree and if you remember how sketchy it is to install these skylights on my own adding this tree to the mix is going to make it even more difficult but I really do think it is going to be worth it and I don't want to damage the hedge so I think what I'm going to have to do is cut it back as much as I can so remove all of the small branches and then somehow manage to push all of the branches back and then allow enough space for me to work and install this skylight doing the flashing tape and all of that stuff with it being there is not an issue is just that final part when I'm going to need to install the skylight that's going to be really difficult now some of you might be thinking chris it looks like the floor of the tiny house is below the land and you can't be having that because all of the rain will land on the ground and any standing water will then run off into the house causing damp rotting and you don't want to be having that so in the future what i'm going to be doing is lowering all of the land that surrounds the tiny house and the reason for this is i have got some insane designs for the garden and i honestly cannot wait to get on with all of that in fact i can't stress to you enough i am really really enjoying this build because it's the first time ever that I have complete and utter control over creating and designing my dream home so there's lots of things that normally I wouldn't do but on this project I will be doing and an example of it is this skylight window I mean there's no real need for it because as I've said this window is looking out directly into a tree and therefore it doesn't really act like a very good window because there is not much natural light going to be getting to it but I imagined it might create a really cool effect because when I'm sat on the sofa watching tv and there's a wood burner going it's going to create this really weird perspective where you can look out of a pretty much floor to ceiling window and see straight into a hedgerow which you never see now that's the positive side is when you see the end result of these ideas because i know it will look amazing and all the work will be worth it but in the actual moment it is extremely difficult because obviously that hedge cannot move and therefore i've got to move the ladder and all of the tyvek all around it and as a result it took me probably three times longer than normal to just tyvek this amount of area than say any of the other walls on the tiny house and i have absolutely no problem admitting that i'm really strong struggling at the moment with time management. It is getting to the point where I have got three weeks to make this habitable so I can move in on the 1st of January 2024, which is 22 days away. And unfortunately for me, there is always one option when you're really struggling with time, and that is called the night shift, which I don't like doing. I really don't, but it basically means I reintroduce 48 hour days. Now, this is not healthy. I don't really recommend you doing it, but you got to do what you got to do. So I'm currently recording this voiceover sat in my car in the Sainsbury's car park that I upload these videos at. And I've decided that tomorrow is going to start right now and my thought is my alarm goes off at quarter past six every single morning that is in eight hours and that is eight hours where it is not going to rain now the main issue that i'm having with rain is the fact that i can't really mastic the outstands and then carry the glass in the rain because water and glass equals slippage slippage on a 76 kilogram skylight equals 400 quid down the drain the real priority is just getting the outstands done and that is my plan for tonight is just to do all of the flashing on the outstands and the great news is that is completely silent work because it's just a hot air gun going razor blades and scissors that's it it's completely silent so none of my neighbors will have any idea that i'm working all through the night but the bad news is tomorrow me is going to be very unhappy with today me because i'm going to be knackered but i will also feel very happy because once this task is done it will literally take me a couple hours to get the remaining skylights in and once that's done 
that worry of rain is over i can now get on with the rest of the tiny house which is going to be amazing because it's all going to be inside work then and therefore if it's raining it doesn't hold me up and that is really the biggest issue that i've got going on at the moment is if i am at the tiny house and i start doing a bit of the flashing and then it starts chucking it down i've got to stop immediately so as with everything a short-term sacrifice for a long-term gain i've done this sort of thing before and it is a hundred percent worth it every single time and i've already noticed how i've got a lot quicker at installing this flashing tape now with everything the more you do something the better you get at it so i thought i'd give you an update on my understanding of flashing tape and also a massive thank you to all the people who have commented giving suggestions ideas and tips when using it first thing to remember is that you can't apply it to a damp surface i mean you can a little bit but if it has just rained you really need to use kitchen roll and dry it all the next thing that's important is to leave it in a warm area never below four degrees i think is the lowest temperature you can really store it in and that was the issue the first day is it was minus two so therefore i was literally using frozen rubber hence why it did not stick to the tyvek well at all so always remember heat is your friend when it comes to adding flashing tape and in fact you can't really heat it up too much well you, of course you can it will eventually start to deform but because it has got an aluminium foil top coat that kind of holds it all in place and it's actually unbelievable how hot you can get this stuff you can make the actual rubber backing to it completely boil and that is what allows it to really fix to the tyvek is when it gets super hot starts to boil and then melts itself onto and maybe a little bit into the actual house wrap the other thing that seems to be really important as well is to let it cool down and you can see if there's any areas that delaminate what i mean by delaminate just where you can clearly see that it hasn't stuck to the actual tyvek therefore any rain that's running down the house wrap it could find its way behind the flashing tape and then make its way into the outstand any water that sits there will then start to rot the timber frame and then that causes all of the problems that i've mentioned in previous videos now the other thing that you might have seen that i do is i kind of make the tyvek into a bit of an l shape going up the outstand and the reason for this is just to add an extra layer of protection in case some water manages to find its way down behind the flashing tape it could actually prevent any of that water getting to the timber frame and then just run down the Tyvek. So it's kind of like I've got two layers of defense against water. The next thing that's really important to do is just go over everywhere again with the hot air gun and use the roller with a lot of pressure. And that will just really ensure that it's properly sticking to the outstand and to the Tyvek. Because remember, you just don't want it to delaminate at some point in the future when you've got all of the cladding on. I also don't recommend using a razor blade like I use them. It's a little bit scary but if you're an idiot like me who buys a hundred of them and doesn't check that they actually fit the knife that you have then well you don't really have any choice but to use them so that's it for this video if you enjoyed it please give it a like subscribe if you're new and i will see you tomorrow in a bit